let's over zoom Wednesday night Bible study. Sister Linda, God bless you, Julia. Glad to see you tonight. Appreciate you all and your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Yes. Saw that beautiful picture on your Mother's Day, Linda. <laughs> that was nice. Hey, Sister Stevens. God bless you. I was worth it, Lord. God bless you, dear. Hope all of your mothers had a wonderful Mother's Day. You thought I was worth it. Hallelujah. Hey, First Lady. Good to see you tonight. I just saw her minutes ago, but glad to see her online. <laughs> Come on in, saints. Get your Bibles. Colossians, third chapter tonight. Colossians 3. Hey, Mother Gaston. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. God bless all my friends and family, those that observe the program. And join us tonight for the word of the Lord. In the word of the Lord, Colossians chapter 3. Well, we thank God for you. Thank you for being a part tonight and coming in, and we honor the presence of the Lord who uh, makes us rich in him, adds no sorrow, causes us to have reasons to rejoice, 
reasons to give praise and to glorify and lift up his matchless name. There is none like him. No one else can do for us the things that he has done. And so we always believe that it is right to honor the Lord, the God of our salvation, and to give him the glory uh, that he is due. To each of you, our deacons, our elders and ministers, Pastor Aaron and our church mother, Mother Mayo, all my sisters and brothers in Christ, the children that are observing and those that are not on live but you'll join later on, we're glad to have you tonight. And I want you to know that greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. In fact, the Lord has something great for you tonight. And I believe that it is important for all of us when we study the word, it's not just to learn a formula or learn a practice, but it's to learn also how to apply it. What good is having it if you don't know how to use it? Amen. And so we're going to learn something tonight about mankind, about the human nature. Uh, and it's not that you are unique in this. All of us have a need to do something. It's called behavior modification. Amen. Say with me, behavior, behavior, modification. And that means changing the way you act, the way you behave, even the way you think and the way you carry yourself. Any of you that are trying to do better, it means you've recognized that you have done worse. It, it means that you recognize that there is a need for change in your life, a need for something new, something different, something that will uh, cause you to feel better about yourself. And it is okay to find out what you need for yourself. Everything that you need does not have to come from a counselor or a therapist, uh, although there's nothing wrong with seeing those. But every now and then, you should be able to look into the spiritual mirror and see something and say to yourself, I don't like that. I, I don't like the things that I say, the things that I do, uh, the way that I behave when I'm around certain people, the language I use. I don't like having a habit I can't quit, the drinking, the, the smoking. The, I, don't, I know weed is legal, but I don't want it. Now. I want to quit. The way you do these things when you have a purpose and a desire, it means you have to have a reason to change your behavior. Amen? That's behavior modification. <clears throat> Excuse me. And all of us can do it. In fact, the scripture gives us modification instructions, tells us about things to put on and things to put off. That means change. Uh, you don't have to be told to change uh, when winter comes. You realize summer clothes just won't do it, right? And so you automatically get busy and make that change. God bless you, Brother Hunt McAtee. Amen. And Deacon Luther Amos, appreciate you. Amen. You don't have to be told every little detail in your life. But there comes a point in time when you just got to get tired of yourself. Get frustrated with yourself. Disappointed with yourself. And if, if you're the person that everybody else disappoints you and you are never disappointed with yourself, I think you need to have yourself rechecked, reexamined. I think you need to go back and say, Lord, wash me over again. Lord, purge me, cleanse me. Speak to my heart and my mind. I don't want to be the one that you spoke of that you call lifted up with pride and that you called filled with envy and filled with evil spirit and evil concupiscence. I don't want to be the one that when you speak of me, it's something negative. I want to be the one you called Hephzibah, beautiful blessed, anointed, pure before God. And so we're going to go into the word, and it is a study. So we're going to talk about the scripture, talk about the word. And I believe if you're willing to receive, you can receive tonight. Let's talk to the Lord. Dear Lord, our Father, we honor you, we praise you, we thank you for this opportunity to enter into your word, to enter into the scripture. We lift up our eyes to you because you are our maker and our creator. We look to you for all help, for all understanding. Even as we read the word of God, even as we read in the text these verses in the scripture that we consider sacred before you and before man, we ask that you would anoint us to hear 
anoint us to understand, anoint us to see. Let us see in the word some things we've not seen before, hear some things we've not heard, and receive through the Spirit some things we've never received. We are before you as an open vessel and ask that your blessing fill us, that the anointing and the power be upon us, that we might make effective change in our lives. And in your name we pray and say thank God and amen. Somebody say better. Better, B-E-T-T-E-R, better, not butter, better, not bitter, better. Uh, everybody wants to do better. Everybody with good sense wants to do better. Y'all have heard me say before, old landmark, everybody uh, with good sense wants to be saved. If a person can look at me in the eye and say, I don't want to be saved. I don't want nothing to do with being saved. That either means you don't understand what saved is or you are perhaps a little mentally aff affected or there's just something wrong with your head because everybody with good sense wants to be saved. Nobody wants destruction. Nobody wants pain and suffering. Nobody wants anguish and disappointment from God. Nobody wants to feel the sense of abandonment and the sense of persecution and the sense of absence of something tangible in your life. Yes, I know you've said it in the carnal, everybody needs somebody. Let me tell you what, when God steps away from you, you realize, Lord, I need you now. I need you every moment. I need you. And the way you get there is speak the truth in your own heart. Speak the truth in your own heart. Don't wait on somebody to come up and render a judgment on you. Amen. The church is a judgment-free zone. Did you hear me, Landmark? It's a judgment free zone. The only judgments that come through are when the word of God is pronounced and the spirit of the living God strikes you in the chest and say, that's what I'm talking about. When it fits you, when it quickens you, when it strives within your flesh and you feel the war going on, then you know you've been judged by God. He said, you don't need man to judge you. You just need to hear the truth and you shall know the truth the truth shall set you free. Three things you need to know. Three things about being a member of our church. Three things about living for the Lord. If you know it's wrong, that's something you can control because you already have knowledge. And you need to quit the things that you know are wrong. Not saying it's easy. Not saying it'll happen like that. But something you need to work on. That's behavioral Adjustment, behavioral modification. Stop the things that you know already know that displeases God. The things that displease him you need to put away. So you already know. You may not be a Bible scholar, but something on the inside will say, you know, God is not pleased with that. And when you encounter the things that you know are wrong and you do what you already know is wrong, the Bible calls that uh, a, a type of sin. It is a type of sin, but it's a sin against the word of God. It's a sin against what you already know. It's a sin against your own consciousness. So if you know to do right, do it. If there are things that you know are wrong and you do it, you have strictly violated the law of God, pure and simple. You knew it, you did it, you're wrong. But then there's another type of sin called iniquity. Iniquity is a hidden sin. You don't necessarily see it on the outside, but it's a sin of your conscience, a sin of thought. It is when you betray the active spirit of God who is causing the struggle in your flesh, the struggle in your mind, and you think you, you may not be sure about the absoluteness of an item, a thing, an action, and of a behavior. You're not sure the absoluteness of it, but something inside says, you know, that doesn't feel right. That should not be right. It, this is not like the things you've learned in the scripture, the law. Honor the Lord, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Honor your mother and father, amen, and thou shalt have no other good. It's not the Ten Commandments, but it's something deeper than that. It's from the heart, and you recognize that there is something that says to me, don't. But when you violate the don't in your spirit, that's called iniquity. Iniquity is a sin of your conscience. Yeah. And then 
the best thing about it all is the third revelation from heaven. When you see the light, you walk in it. And walking in the light is called sanctification. Yeah. That's how you have obvious evidence that you're progressing in your relationship with God. Somebody say amen. amen. You, Sister Stacy, you got to be willing to make a change. I'm not saying you. I'm just using your name because your name was the first one that popped up, and y'all know I'm a name-calling pastor. You got to be willing to make a behavioral change. Yes. And nobody can do it for you but you. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, so let's go into the word of the Lord, Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness, of mind, meekness, and long-suffering. Verse 12 comes to a point where you've already been defined concerning who you are. It starts with the concept that regardless to your background, Greek or Jew, circumcised or not circumcised, meaning you are of the strictest Jewish sect or not, whether you're a barbarian, a Scythian, whether you are in slavery or you're a freeman, Christ is all and in all. Mm -hmm. Say with me, Christ is all. Christ is all. And Christ is, all. and Christ is in all. Jesus has somebody of every walk of life that is struggling in their spirit. Yes, there are some hardcore racists, hardcore haters, but they're struggling with the hate. They feel like there's something wrong with how I feel and I believe it's the love of Jesus, but my culture, my environment says this is how I must live. And they don't know how to bring in behavioral modification. So every one of you, every one I'm speaking to, every one of you that have come through something and you know who Jesus is, every one of you that have walked in disobedience in the past and walked in disobedience to the point that you lived in disobedience. Some of you were idolaters. If you go to verse 5, it says, kill all these evil things in your flesh. Mortify, that means put to death the members, the parts of you that are on the earth that can cause your condemnation. Fornication, <coughs> uncleanness, inordinate affection. That means affection that is out of control. That's Colossians, amen, same book. Verse 3, verse 5, affection that's out of control. Mm -hmm. And some of you all uh, have had inordinate or have inordinate affection. You can't get it under control. It's your weakness. You fall for it every time. You just give in to it, whether it's drugs or a person or a type of person, a type of woman, a type of man. Whenever they come around, you get weak and you are strong otherwise. Leap tall buildings with a single bound. But when she passes by, inordinate affection makes you weak to your own strength. Mm -hmm. Evil thoughts, pornography, and things that you know are wrong and you wish you could get out of, but you, you feel bound by it. Covetousness, things that you want that others have. I want to be like them, and I, if i got to take it, I'll get it. Uh, all of this the Bible calls idolatry. It goes against who God really is. These are the reasons, the things that brought God's anger on the children. And in fact, it brought God anger on, man, anger on mankind. And verse 7 says, in the which ye also walked sometime. See, everybody in church been through something. Hello, somebody. Uh, don't come to church to see everybody just dressed up and feeling good and looking good and shouting and dancing. And you feel like you're the only one ever been dirty. Everybody has fallen and fallen short of the glory of God. But the word says the way you get better, you've got to make some actions to kill these things. Mm -hmm. Destroy it. Satan, I put you out of my life. I don't need you no more. I don't need you no more in my life. Fornication, uncleanness, all this uh, affection that you know is wrong, the passion to do the things you do, the evil thoughts, the covetousness, the idolatry, even the things that you know God hates, 
Yes, you have done them in the past. You might even still be doing them and don't know how to get out. Verse 8 says, now, here's the thing you do. Put all these things off. Put them off. Somebody say, just put it off. Put it I understand. You say, Pastor, I've tried. I've tried, and it's just not that easy, Pastor. I, I'm trying to do better. You should have seen me last year. You appreciate me now uh, if you have seen me last year. I understand we all go through growth phases, and we all go through changes, and some of us, God has blessed. You could just change just like that, and others, behavior modification is tough. There's some addictive behaviors that have affected our flesh, the drugs, and the alcohol and the smoking, these things are tough, but we're not going to give up. If you want to clean yourself up, you can. You want to put it away, you can. You want to stop it, you can. But the word says, verse 8, now ye also put off these. But now put off these. Now say, okay, you, you, you've you been through that uh, self-deprecation, talking about yourself, feeling bad, wiping your tears. Lord, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just can't do no better. I guess this is just it. The verse says, no, but now let's put these things off. Come on, somebody say, put it off. Put it off. Oh, y'all not preaching with me, are you? Put it off. It's about your behavior. Mm -hmm. What are you going to put off? Anger. Fierce anger. The, you're the kind of person that... Uh, if they catch you at the wrong time, if the cops are around, you get arrested because your anger is out of control. Somebody said the wrong thing, and you're ready to fight, said the wrong thing, and it, it makes you boil on the inside. You know you got to get control of it. Yeah. Words says put it off. That, that kind of wrath, malice, just being uh, treating people badly. Some folk enjoy treating people badly. Blasphemy. Things that you know go against God, and you got to watch that blasphemy. It's, it's not just when you cuss people out, but sometimes you start talking about God's people and God's church like he's not even listening. Amen. You say, well, I know Jesus ain't in there because I know I know some stuff. Well, God knows some stuff too. Yes, he does. Filthy communication. Get it out of your mouth. Wash it out. Don't lie to one another. Now that you have put off the old man, you have taken a, a change, you put on a new man, you've made yourself new after the knowledge of the one who is in you. You've learned who Jesus is, and you're working hard to be better. I'm talking about you. You're working hard to be that new creature, and the hard to be the one that God has called. And I will tell you, it's not always easy. I want you to know. When God saves you, he saved you. When you came to that altar and you meant it, he meant it too. He knew the baggage you brought with you. And I know we say leave it there, but sometimes it walks away with us when we leave. Sometimes you got to go back because you're living with the baggage. You're living in that situation. You, you got issues and conditions that are not just automatic. Some things may take time to work out. Some things God can take away just like that. But you got to believe, God, that no matter who you are, Greek, Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, we're talking about the spiritual groups, the religious sects, not that physical circumcision, although the spiritual, the spiritual sect was uh, physically circumcised. Those that are barbarian, you just came out of the woods, came out of the jungles. You, you came from a harsh lifestyle. Well, that's just the way we are. You know, that thug life, that's what barbarian. Barbarian is another word for thug. Come on. He says, there is no Greek. There is no Jew. There's not even a thug. There is no slave, no free man. But we are all in Christ. And Christ is in all. That's why when you come to church, you can't look at people to try to judge them and decide who they are and what kind of person they are. Child, you better get to know them. I know they came to Christ. They came to the altar. Oh, but you better get to know them. The word says, once they come to Christ... Christ has no label for them. The only label he has for them is mine. The only name he has for you is mine. You're no longer that thug life. It might be tattooed on your body, but you don't have to have it in your heart. No longer that worldly existence. You got a new life. And because you are new, because you have come to Christ, because you have touched the altar of God, and said, come into my heart, I receive you in my heart. It is a change that comes on you. And the change will come. It may not be automatic. I know we say it'll happen just like that. It should have, but Peter still carried his sword. 
And up to the end was cutting off ears. It, it should have, uh, but Peter was still cussing all the way to the end. It should have, but Judas denied him right at the end. It, it should have, uh, but people were people. And they did the things that people do. And I'm saying to you, since you belong to Christ, you are now holy and beloved. Did you know that? The Lord calls you holy. You're the elect, the chosen of God. Uh, yeah, I'm talking to you with your hair all messed up. I'm talking to you with your, your rings and, and your spikes. And I'm talking to you with your tattoos in public places. I'm talking to you that have said, I don't fit in. I don't own a suit. I just got tennis shoes and all my pants are ripped. And I went to that church and he used to say, you can't come in here with ripped pants. But you gave your life to the Lord. And now he calls you chosen. He calls you holy. He calls you beloved. And so what do you do? You put on something. Mercy. Somebody say mercy. In fact, not just learn a little mercy. Mercy becomes your characteristic. This is how your behavior begins to change. This is how your attitude changes. Start feeling for people. Start having a sensitivity for others. Start feeling sorry for somebody that needs some sorrow. Start giving love to somebody that needs some love. Start feeling a compassion for humanity. And right now, if the first thing you can do is start having compassion on somebody, compassion on the hungry and feed them, compassion on the cold and you give them a jacket or a coat or a means to get one, compassion on those that are walking and you say, I can give you a ride. I know who you are. I know where you live. Compassion. Yes. That's the bowels of mercy. The inside of you is full of mercy. If you were cut with a spiritual knife, knife mercy would flow. Kindness would flow. No, it will if you got the love of God in you and you're trying to be his. It comes out of you, the kindness. That old person, that person you used to be always roughing folk up. Now you got a gentleness, gentleness about your word. Humbleness of mind, not lifted up, but coming on back down to earth. Realizing that you're God's and it is he that have made you and not we ourselves. You find some humility in your spirit. Some yes sir, yes ma'am in your spirit. Yes to the Lord, your will be done. Lord, I don't understand it, I don't even like it, but your will be done. Humbleness of mind. Meekness, meaning it's okay. I know who I am. I know I got a rough and tough and a, a, a tumble side, but I know how to put on meekness. I'm going to wear it like a coat. I'm going to wear these characteristics because these are the characteristics of those who want behavioral change. If I want to put out some spiritual things, those habits in me, the first thing I need to do is change what's on the inside. And if you get these things on the inside, you will have the control that you're looking for. Because first of all, know who you are. You're holy and beloved. And now you are going to bear within yourself the characteristics of the beloved. Mercy, kindness, humility, meek, long-suffering means you can put up with something. You can deal with it. You can tolerate it. And some people... Uh, make it hard for you to tolerate them. But because of the Christ that's on the inside, don't be that safe, sanctified, mean person at work. Don't be that one that the children can't stand. Don't be the one that nobody wants to be around. Amen. If it's like that in your life, then maybe you need to change something because you have put on these characteristics that go along with Behavioral modification. Forbearing one another, putting up with one another. I said I wasn't going to deal with you no more, but forgive me. I said I didn't want to talk to you no more, but forgive me. I realize now that you are a liar and liars lie. That's just the way you are. I know how you are. I just won't believe nothing you say, but if you're hungry, I'll feed you. I just, I just don't, I, you know what? I will tolerate you. I will put up with you. That's what forbear means. 
but not just forbear, forgiving one another. Yes. These are the behavior. Now, see, these are yoke breaking, attitude changing issues. Some of us have trouble with forgiveness. I ain't forgiving them nothing. They owe me. They did me wrong and they, they never paid. They didn't speak right to me. They didn't do by me what was right. And until they do right by me, uh, uh, once you can destroy that mental bondage and get a heart to say, you know what? It doesn't even matter because the word says this to me in, in St. Mark 11, 24 and 25. Whatsoever things I desire when I pray, I believe that I receive them and I shall have them. Hallelujah. And then 25, and if you have an ought against any, forgive that your Father in heaven will forgive you of your trespasses. So I got to forgive. I got to let it go. Forgiveness means letting it go. Now, you don't forgive it and talk about it. That's right. You don't forgive it and write books about it. You don't forgive it and tattoo their name, or write their name on the wall and tattoo it all. Your neck says forgiven. That's not how you get forgiveness, just writing it on your body. Okay. It's something you got to write in your heart. That's right. And then if any man have a quarrel against any, let it go. You got, you got an art, a quarrel. You got an issue. You got a beef. I'm trying to bring it to 21st century. You got a beef going on. Let it go. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Are you forgiven? Just like Christ forgave you, you forgive somebody else. Yes. You know what? You say, Pastor, I thought we were talking about behavioral modification. I promise you, if those inner works are defiled in you, it changes your physical work. So you can't really let go of a habit till you let go of a spiritual attitude that requires forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Forgiven Mother's Day just passed, and some of you have hold stuff against your mom, what she didn't do, should have done. Every mother wasn't the best mother. Every mother wasn't a great mother. Uh, I have a coworker we always tease and talk about. I said, you know, uh, did your mom cook dinner? She's, you don't want to eat my mama's cooking. Oh, no, my mama can't. No, no, we don't eat mama's cook. Every mother wasn't that kind of mother. Everybody didn't have the same experience. But the quality that destroys yokes in your life and causes peace in your mind, reduces your blood pressure, increases your net worth, causes joy to enter into your home where you had sadness and anger, and then the ability to let go and put down and stop some stuff comes from the inner characteristic of saying, you know what? God forgave me. And if he was going to charge anybody, if, he's gonna, if I'm going to hold anything against anybody, he has a right to hold me against me. Did you hear that? Yes. If I'm going to hold a grudge, yes. Christ has a right to hold a grudge. Yes. Do you really want Christ bringing up all the wrong you've ever done? I don't think you do. Do you really want Christ being the one to remind you of where you came from. Mm -hmm. So you got to forgive in order yes. to give up. Yes. I'm talking about quitting smoking, quitting drinking, yes. uh, quitting the uh, evil lust, the, the sexual enemies, the drive, the things that you know are wrong, the things that you can't quit, the gambling habit, all those habits. You say, Pastor, I thought you were going to tell me what to do. I am. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Tolerate people. Love people. Yes. All of these issues written here in the Colossian letter deal with teaching church folk how to get along with church folk yes. who are from different backgrounds. Amen. Teaching slaves to get along with their masters and masters get along with their slaves. You say, no, pastor, that's got to be wrong. That's what bond and free means. We're dealing with the real truth of a real day. Today, we would say teaching blacks how to get along with whites and the whites to get along with blacks. Teaching those who look like they represent your oppressor to say, I forgive. Mm. And whatever's in me that's causing me to have this attitude, I want to take it out. Yes, yes. We've got a quarrel against enemy. Even as Christ forgave you, mm. so also do ye. You are sisters and brothers, yes. grown folk and not speaking to each other. Welcome. No, nobody sent me a text. Nobody told me to bring that up. Help us, 
The Holy Ghost is speaking tonight. You got to let it go. Yes, let it go. Friends for life. Friends, you said you're going to be friends for life. And that friend betrayed you. And you felt put out by him. I, ain't, I don't ever want to see him. I, don't even, I ain't even going to that funeral. Some things you got to let go. Let it go. If you want Christ to bring a blessing into your life. And when you do this above all things, put on charity. Yes, Lord. Learn how to be loving, which is the sign that you are maturing in God. Learn how to have love one to another. Yes. Learn how to let God rule in you. Let God be the one that speaks peace in you. And then let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Everything about your day, how will this bring peace in my life? Something I want to say to you, something I want to tell her, I'm going to tell her, oh, wait a minute, is that going to bring peace in my life? And you know what? I'm just going to let that go. Let it go. Because, Lord, every time I see what they did to me, I remember what I did to you. Yeah. Every time I see and I get angry about how they spoke to me, I'm reminded of things that I've said in my life. So I need to change my behavior in order to get the blessing that you want to have. I need to change my attitude, change my inner man, change that inner creature so I can now have control of the outer creature. Doesn't that make some sense? So in order for me to put down some stuff, I need to get some stuff out of me that I could be filled with the spirit of the Lord, that I could be filled with the word of God and filled with his glory. So now we're going to, verse 15, let the peace of God rule in our hearts. And we're going to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly in all wisdom. That's why you can't miss a Wednesday night Bible study. Mm -hmm. You got to let the word of Christ dwell in you. That's why you change what you play in your ear all day. You want some edifying things. Get the Bible. Let the word of God be read. Pick a sermon. Uh, go back and play one of Bishop Amos's videos on YouTube. All of them are on YouTube. Now, you can go back, and you can put YouTube in your ear all day while at work, and it'll be the rich word of God that's dwelling in you, and it will bring you wisdom. It will teach you. It will admonish you. It will encourage you. You need somebody to say, hey, hang on in there. That's why you fill your heart, your mind, your soul up with the word of Christ. And once you do that, you'll encourage one another. Psalms and hymns, mm -hmm. spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And you say, that's funny now that, you know what, it's so funny even today. I had a real live example of that. But one of my coworkers was dealing with an issue, and she said, I don't just know what I'm going to do. I don't see how this is going to work. And I said, Jesus will work it out if you let Jesus. I did it just like that. Jesus will work it out. And then together, we're both singing, Jesus will work it out. Work it out. <laughs> yeah. Work it out. Mm -hmm. you got to encourage one another That's in right. psalms and yeah. hymns yeah. and spiritual songs. And I said to her, I said, that's what happens when church folk get together, even at work. Because we allow the word of Christ, the wisdom, the songs, the melodies, the grace of God to rule in our hearts. We're not going to let the enemy come in. There's no problem so great that we cannot find the peace of God in it and allow us to solve it. So you've got to sing with grace in your hearts to the Lord, to the Lord. It's got to be to the Lord. Hallelujah. And everything that comes out of Hollywood and comes out of the East and the West and comes through some of the music of the day is not of the Lord. I, need, I know somebody needs to say that. Everything you hear is not of the Lord. Amen, somebody. If you want to have a change in your behavior, you got to change in what you let into your temple. Change in what you allow your eyes to see and your ears to hear. Change the words of your environment. Change the spirit of your home by songs and hymns and the word of God being read in your home. Leave the word of God. Put it on. Get it where it's on digital. And let the word of God be speaking through your speakers into your home, even while you're going and come back. And you'll find that it will change your environment. That's right. Yes, it will. And sing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And finally, whatever you do, whatever you do, whether it's in things you say or whatever you do in action, 
check in with the Lord before you do it. That's how you change your behavior. You're going to pay a bill. They did you wrong. The bank messed up your account. They messed up your check. Let's go. Yeah, let's make it that one. Let's do messed up your check. That's real personal, isn't it? Messed up my check. Oh, I'm going to this office. What? Don't come up until my shift is over. Oh, no, you messed up my check. We're going to deal with that now. I know how we do. Don't mess up my money. Because when you go to talk about your money, remember who y'all, wait a minute, I don't want the old man to show up. So whatever I do, the words that I say, I'm going to say it firmly. I'm going to be determined. I'm going to be articulate. But I'm going to make sure that Christ shows up. Because if the enemy shows up, I lose my job. If the enemy shows up, I might get arrested. <laughs> and then who gets the glory? But I'm going to say what I got to say and let the Lord fix it and let them fix my check. You, you don't seem too agitated about, oh, I'm very agitated about it. I'm very upset. But it's the Christ in me right. that, and you think in your mind, is keeping me from strangling you right now. But you don't say it. You don't say it. Got to let grace step in. It's the Christ in me that is restraining me because the old me would have acted up, but I, I knew it must have been a mistake because you know how many hours I work, and I can do the math just like you can do the math, so I just need you to, to fix this. Thank you very much, and may the Lord bless you and keep you. Change your behavior. Change your attitude toward people. Change how you demonstrate frustration. And then when you get a control of that, the habits become easier to control. Because when spirit wins, flesh is defeated. Did you hear me? Yeah. When the spirit wins, flesh is defeated. Bishop Amos, you're teaching some good stuff tonight. Yes, you are. When you let the spirit into your heart, into your mind, and comfort yourself with the word of the Lord. Comfort yourself with the spirit. Get this video and save it. Play it, save it to your digital file. And then play it. What was that Pastor Amos said? Let me go back and get that word again. That's right. Amen. I got one hour left of work. If they let you put your earpiece in, put my preaching in there, put the teaching in there. Get one of those Amos videos, Dr. Amos, old landmark coaching, Bishop Amos live videos. That's right. And let it That's cause great. your spirit to be subdued yes. so that your flesh doesn't act out of sort. Amen. And after a while, you know what happens? A new behavior takes over. After a while, the old things are passed away, and all things are become new. And people will look at you and say, you just look different. You just act different. What's going on with you? Well, you know what? I found the answer. I learned to pray. Yeah. I found the answer. I learned how to get control over my spirit. And when I got control over my spirit, it changed my behavior. And now I can command my flesh to be at peace with God. Amen? Amen. Colossians chapter 3, we went uh, through most of that portion through verse 16, but I want you to read it again, and read it again, and read it again. Put on, therefore, because you are in Christ, and he is in you. Christ is in, is all, and is in all. We're not looking at Jew, and Gentile, black, Hispanic, uh, whatever your nationality, that's not what's going to save you. It's the Christ that's in you. Amen. And the barbarian. I said, it. that's the thug. And people say, I'm giving to the thug life. Well, you know what? Uh, get into the Jesus life. And it will nudge out that part of you you think you can't live with without you think you need it. Watch the Lord work it out for you. Somebody give God a praise right now. Come on and bless the Lord for the word. Thank you all for being with me tonight. I appreciate that. I I see so many of you. We all going to work, Sister Brenda, on our behavior. Sister Lashara, we're going to work on our behavior. We're going to work on it. Pastor, I'm going to work on it. I know you talked about me tonight, but I'm working on me. I'm going to work on me. I, I know there are things I can do and need to do and will do, but I will do. Uh, the Lord give me grace and power. I'm going to make some effective changes. I, I know I can be irritable and fussy, but I'm going to try to be better. I'm going to try to be more peaceful. I'm, I'm going to try to lower the tone in my voice. I understand 
that I have ways that uh, make people nervous. And I'm going to set them at ease a little bit. God bless you. How you doing today? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If praise the Lord is intimidating, then you just don't. I can't help you. If, if hallelujah, bless the Lord. How's your day? Uh, wonderful. The Lord is good. If that bothers you, then I just can't help you. But that's just what's on the inside. I'm glad I took out all the old stuff. Putting in some new wine, some new wine. And new wine is always better than the old because the new wine can last forever and give you everlasting joy. And I'm not talking about wine you buy in a bottle. I'm talking about that which Jesus himself can give to cause you to be able to enjoy the behavior change that he wants in you. A lot of the verses, a lot of the word, uh, and we've only touched on the tip of the iceberg, deals with human behavior, yes. how to overcome it, how not to be driven by the enemy, but be driven by that word charity, which means love. Yes. It means the giving of yourself. It means giving up of yourself. And so when it, you are really perfecting the will of God in you, you give up of yourself and people can sense you are a giving spirit, sharing, loving, and somebody say, oh, they, that's an easy mark. You know, they're a pushover. You're not a pushover, but you don't mind helping. You don't mind sharing. You don't mind letting somebody get the best of you. They think they got the best of you, but they don't know that all they did was prove to you that Christ is alive in your life. Because you remember when. You remember when. But they have simply proven to you. Yes. Yes, he is real. He's real in my soul. For he has washed and made me whole. That's yeah. how you know. Because you'll be tested. And you will pass the test. God bless you. We're talking about behavior modifications. And I believe the Holy Ghost in you. Because you are already the elect of God, holy, beloved, and you are full of the mercy, full of kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, and you are willing to tolerate one another. You're going to practice forgiving. You're going to practice forgiving. You ought to try to think of somebody that I just need to forgive. You don't even have to call and say you're forgiven. Just let forgiveness be your guiding principle now. From this day forward, if I never see him again and if I do, it's all right now. It's all right now. My attitude has changed, my behavior. And when I let that go and break that yoke, mm -hmm. you know what I've done? I've opened up a pathway for the blessings of God to come in my life, for the Lord to shower down on me and let his glory be revealed. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for the understanding of the scripture. We thank you how you've touched hearts and minds and helped us reflect on who we are and where we are and the changes, the need that we have in our life. Give us the power, the strength, the ability to put off what we need to put off and to put on what we need to put on. Lead us and guide us through your spirit. We don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. We, we like having the Holy Ghost in our life, in our heart, in our spirit, in our mind. We like having his voice to lead us and guide us into the paths of righteousness. So thank you for this lesson tonight and I thank you for those that heard and received and even those if they were not saved they said in themselves that's what I want that's what I'm looking for so I ask now Lord you give them the power of the strength to say Lord Jesus come into my heart Lord Jesus come into my spirit Lord Jesus make me over again and I receive you as my Lord and Savior and it is done in Jesus name and we say thank God. Come on, somebody. Let's give God a praise, everybody that can. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And watch God make a change in their lives. We thank God for you. We thank you for attending. And I, I want to ask you to do something tonight. Amen. I want you to give a special love gift to the work of the Lord tonight. Amen. We know that you are able because the Lord always provides through his people. So I want you to give a very special gift tonight. If you can give 10 or $20 tonight, amen, as the Lord has blessed you, why don't you do that? A $10 or a $20 gift will help us out, amen, in the needs of the work of the ministry, amen, as well as help us to help others. We thank God for you, and you may give by way of the cash app, dollar sign, old landmark, or you may give by way of the Givelify app, which is the app, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y dot com. And look for Old Landmark, C-O-G-I-C, 
Fort Wayne, Indiana, and that will be this great church. Amen. Everybody do what you can do and give tonight. Give that gift. Amen. And it will be a blessing to the work of the Lord and ministry. Everybody give something. And amen. Let's just give our offering like we do and indicate that we gave, not just to be seen of the world, but it's all right to be seen doing good stuff, doing good things. Amen. It's all right to be seen doing the will of God. And then Jesus sat next to the offering and watched people give as they brought it around. That's yes. why yes. he was able to say that, that a woman who gave the two mites gave Thank more you. than anyone else because he was watching. Mm -hmm. and he's watching tonight. Honor the Lord. Thank you, uh, Brother, Fer Brother uh, Fleming. God bless you. Amen. All is good. God is blessing his people. God is blessing you, and I want you to give liberally tonight. Amen. I want you to be able to destroy the yokes. If you're not a tither, you should tithe. Tithing is God's plan to bless you and to keep you. Sister King, God bless you. Good to see you again online. Amen for you. Amen. I see Larissa Burnett. Thank you for joining us, Larissa. Thank you for the word of God. May it rich, enrich your life. Mother Williams, thank you so much. I saw Mother Head online. Appreciate you, Mother Head. Praise God for each of you that have desires before the Lord, Jimmy Ayala, Dios bendiga, uh, de los Estados Unidos, del Estado de Norte de Carolina. God bless Brother Pastor Jimmy. He's one of our Amen. pastors in Puerto Rico, Jimmy Ayala. God bless each of you. Yes, we honor you. We love you, Sister Gloria. Thank you for sharing and watching with us tonight. Gloria Bellario. Amen. A dear friend. Amen. We appreciate you. Thank you, Sister Stacy, for your gift. Amen. Honor God for each of you. Brother Jimmy says, God bless you, beloved bishop. Amen. Greetings from Puerto Rico. Hallelujah. I love it. I love it. I love my saints in Puerto Rico. We love you. Dios bendiga. Amen. Nos amos. Nos amos. Amen. We love you. Uh, nos amamos. Bless you. Thank you, Motherhead. I appreciate you. Everyone that can, give your gift unto the Lord and watch God bless you for your gift. Thank you. We'll be praying for you, Sister Gail. Let the Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Lord Levet Malave, thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. God is indeed blessing. Puerto Rico's getting ready for their storm season. You'll be hearing more. We're going to start giving you direction on how to ship and send goods to prepare the people of the island for their storm season. Thank you, Sister Linda, for your gift. Amen. We appreciate you so much. Amen. Ponce, San Juan, uh, Maya Guez. Amen. Aguadilla, Aguada. These are communities where we have ministered uh, and so many more. And I know God is going to bless. Thank you, Sister Julia. I honor you for that. Thank you so much. You all are wonderful, and I appreciate your gifts. Hallelujah. We bless God. Thank you, Sister Stevens. I know you will. Thank you, uh, Deacon Luther Amos. Appreciate you. And Amy Lashara, thank you, Sister, Sister Brenna has given. Sister Abby, thank you again. We appreciate these beautiful saints who honor God and honor the Lord through their giving. This is how we do it. And it's easy to give when that yoke is destroyed in you. And you'll find you have more. Why? Because the Lord knows how to give you increase. Let's pray now. Lord, we're praying for Sister Gail and the need that she has before us, that physical health condition. We pray, Lord, that you turn it and fix it. You already know what it is and you know how to do it. Give her physician the wisdom and, Lord, speak to that body. In Jesus' name we pray. And all those that have needs in their lives, sickness or affliction, conditions in their homes, problems in their lives, yokes that need to be destroyed. We pray now, God, that you would be the yoke destroyer that we know you are. For the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. Let the anointing reign. Let the anointing prevail. Bless your people everywhere. Bless the saints. Bless the beloved. Let the word of God dwell in us richly. And let us be the one body that you're calling for in these last and evil days. We honor you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Well, thank you. We love you. Thank you for being a part of this worship. Thank you for staying with us and hearing what the Lord had to say to us today. And I, I pray it's been a blessing to you and that you will be a blessing to the church. You can always plan on visiting. Our services right now are on the first Sundays of the month. Join us on the first Sunday at 12 o'clock at the facility. And then we also meet online at 12 o'clock on Sundays. So 
you can join us virtually or live. But we appreciate you and keep us in your prayers, and we'll be praying for you. If you need special prayer requests, you may send me an email to bishop at oldlandmark.com, bishop at oldlandmark.com, and watch God work it out for you. Thank you, we love you, and we're praying for you. Bless you.